Welcome to Uptown Chats, a podcast where we share stories about environmental justice by and for everyday people. I'm your co-host, Lonnie. And I'm your other co-host, Jaren. And today we're talking about the EJNYC report with our very special guest, Peggy Shepard, who's mm-hmm. the executive director and co-founder of We Act. We finally got her. We got her in. Yay. She has such a busy schedule. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing that we were able to get time with her because this is actually both relevant to her because she was involved in the process, but also really timely because this report's supposed to come out very soon, right? Yeah, it's supposed to drop at the end of February, but it could be any time this spring. Yeah, we're going to talk about, so what is this report? Why should we care? And we'll find out together. But first, Jaren, can you read the WEAC mission statement? I sure can. WEAC's mission is to build healthy communities by ensuring that people of color and or low-income residents participate meaningfully in the creation of sound and fair environmental health and protection policies and practices. Great. Thank you so much. You got it. So, this EJNYC report. How did it come about? That's, I think, that's the first place we should start, right? That's a great question, and you know better than I, because you are our expert on all things city policy. So, do you want to do you want to tell us a little bit more about the EJNYC report? Yeah. So, Local Law 60 of 2017 basically requires the citywide a citywide study of environmental justice be conducted, right? It was a very great. It was a law that we act was very instrumental in the past before Jaren and I got here <laughs> to get that get that law passed. And the results of the study are supposed to be made available to the public, which they will be, and placed on the city's website. That's like one of the requirements there. Um, but it also requires the creation of an online environmental justice portal. And it's supposed to have access to mapping tools for all the different environmental justice data. So this basically came about because there was a law that said that mandated this. And there was another law as well called Local Law 64 that created this environmental justice advisory board. Very cool. So we had Local Law 60 come out and then uh, Local Law 64. Uh, so uh, what exactly, you know, was required as part of the Environmental Justice Advisory Board? Was it pretty clearly laid out uh, who they're supposed to include and what all was included in, in that bill as well? Yeah, the board was created because we want to make sure that the report it gets made, right? Mm-hmm. That was kind of the the catalyst of that. But also to make sure that we're getting all the right people Mm. who can have a say in the creation of this and kind of basically the direction of New York City when it comes to environmental justice. And so the advisory board is composed of environmental justice advocates, there are academics, public health experts, researchers, and they're they're supposed to work with the city on developing this comprehensive citywide environmental justice plan that's going to be based on the information from the report. So their main deliverable is this plan. We need to have a plan for environmental Mm -hmm. justice for New York City, and we're going to use this report that's going to have a lot of different data, and and you're going to know, you know a little bit more about what's actually in the report or what's going to be in the report and to use that information to create a plan for for the New York City. It's exciting to hear that they took into account you know, who needed to be in the room because I can imagine something like this, you know, the city is required, according to this bill, to create this report and they get a couple of, you know, city agency workers together, knock this thing out and we just get what we get, you know. But to have folks around the city who really do this work of environmental justice, including Peggy, who really knows the EJ landscape of, of, of the city being involved in the process, gives me a lot more confidence yeah. in, in a report like this. I'm, I'm actually surprised that there was, was there something like this previously? Is this the first time the city's doing this kind of report? Yeah, it's the first ever for New York City. We do, New York City does a lot of plans and a lot of reports, as mm-hmm. we know, but we've never had one for environmental justice, and this will be the first. Wow. I would say a little overdue, but you know what? Better late than never. We'll take it. Yes. We got there. But I imagine something like this, most of us would expect probably a little complicated. There's lots of things, even just the term environmental justice, we spent a lot of time talking about what is it and to unpack that into a report. It, it's it's going to be probably pretty long, right? Yeah, it's a pretty long report. And um, we've got a little bit of preview and got to, to look at some of the early draft. Uh, of the report and what kind of things are supposed to be in there. And it really does touch on all of the kind of intersectionality, you know, that, that's the $5 word that I'm going to use for the day um, <laughs> of all the work that we do. Cause like, if you think about all of the kind of different podcast episodes that we've had, um, where we've talked about composting, but we've also mm-hmm. talked about energy use and we've talked about air quality and there's water quality. There's so mm-hmm. many aspects to environmental justice that take in consideration. And yeah, and this report, you know, tries to do that as best as it can and be as comprehensive as possible. But there was a process where the public did get to see a little bit of the scope of work, right? So there were mm-hmm. a couple different webinars that the public got to engage in and really kind of see 
what they're outlining or like, or what's really important for environmental justice throughout the city. Um, and then people got to weigh in on that and, and provide comments and feedback. So that was also very much a, a great way to be informed by the public and those who don't know much about environmental justice. What are they, what are they interested in and what's, what's really important for us to know? Absolutely. And I, and I vaguely remember some of these things kind of popping up and uh, we've actually, you know, for folks who, who are anticipating really excited about this report, they actually have, you know, a, a link that you can look at, you know, what's supposed to be in the report and uh, get some more of this, this background context. And we obviously included uh, a link in the show notes, but just to kind of provide a high level overview, uh, I can kind of walk us through it really quickly because they've done what I would say is a pretty decent job of breaking it into clear sections that kind of help break apart this complex thing that is, you know, environmental justice in the city, because there's lots of different components to it. And there's lots of ways that you could really talk about it. So uh, just quickly, the report is broken up in essentially to three primary tasks or sections, in addition to the the first thing, which is, you know, identifying what are the environmental justice issues in the city, right? Because mm -hmm. you can't talk about environmental justice without really pointing to the parts of the city that we know have had a disproportionate impact. We, we, we can already say pretty clearly what some of those areas are based on, you know, historical policies and impacts. And just even if you look at like health impacts, for example, you look at asthma in the city, you can look pretty clearly and see where, where some of these uh, environmental justice communities are. You know, you've seen plenty of maps too, and you could probably draw it from memory. Yeah. And it's getting, it's getting at the equity point that we always uh, drive here versus quality, right? If we don't know who's being disproportionately burdened, then our plan will be useless. Yeah, exactly. So the report outlines these environmental justice areas that have been identified. And it also has these kind of three primary tasks that it's outlined to, to include in this report. And I think this is a part of, you know, the local law 60 that, that required this re report be produced. So the first section, it's all about analyzing and outlining environmental outcomes and, and climate vulnerabilities. So in other words, how are the environmental benefits and burdens distributed across the city, especially among, you know, historically marginalized groups. And they've done a nice job of kind of listing out some of them. I just pull up a couple of examples because it's a long list. Like I said, you know, I think yeah. about a lot of the things that fall. You listed a couple of things. But, for example, uh, some of the environmental justice concerns they've listed here are drinking water quality, sewage infrastructure quality, exposure to hazardous chemicals, Proximity to and quality of, you know, green space, waterfront, park space, outdoor air quality, lots of stuff on there. So, you know, I, I encourage you to take a look at some of these things because it, it's good to see what they're listing as some of those factors because there's so many dimensions of environmental justice. You might look at that list and be like, yeah, there's a couple things missing or, you know, maybe there's some more specific things that need to be on that list. But either way, I, I thought it was pretty pretty comprehensive. Or there might be some things that you didn't even realize were environmental justice concerns. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's section one. That's, that's you know, this first task is just looking at those environmental benefits and burdens. The second task is analyzing and outlining the city's contribution to environmental justice. And that means, you know, looking at the city's programs, processes, activities, and policies to see how they've impacted for better or worse environmental justice so how, how has the city positively or negatively impacted environmental justice through the work that they do so that is a very interesting mm -hmm. thing to unpack and and i i feel like the city has a lot of programs a lot of, a lot of things that it, that it does in, in different dimensions so i'm, I'm hopeful that they are, are thorough and look at even things that don't seem super related or, or less clearly environmental justice that they they've managed to get to those two. Absolutely. All right. Last one here. Section three, review public engagement by city agencies and participation in the environmental decision making. And you actually alluded to this a second ago. You said something about public engagement, you know, in the process kind of early right. on in some of the stages. And so, yeah, you know, it's great that they're including this as part of their report to really look at the public engagement piece. Because when we talk about environmental justice, one of the pieces that people often forget is, you know, that meaningful engagement piece. How are you making sure that when you're making a decision that's impacting a community, that those folks are engaged in the process and, and have a say? So, you know, this section is supposed to look at, you know, how does the city involve New Yorkers in environmental decision making, especially on the distribution of environmental benefits and decisions? And do they integrate environmental justice principles 
into those engagement processes? Are they doing a good job of that? Yeah, I mean, basically touches at the mission statement that we say every episode. Yes. Yeah. So see, this is why we say it. you got to remember that it's embedded. It should be embedded in all the things that the city is doing and that other governmental bodies are doing. And of course, that we're doing too. So lots of different you know components of this report. I'm excited to see what it actually looks like when it comes out. But based on this kind of outline, I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to see some good stuff come out there that we can continue to build on and, and know what's next. You know, what's next when we move forward and... Uh, yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I think it, it's going to be great to have kind of you need a baseline and you need you need data. You also need narrative. Right. We need to understand a little bit more. This is why it was important to have environmental justice organizations be a part of this process as well for the city. So you just don't have a bunch of academics and researchers who are amazing at their job, what they do. Mm-hmm. But sometimes pulling in that narrative element of like, how do we contextualize some of this data that we're getting really will make this uh, report, I think, a unique and kind of like really enriched report in order to, again, we need a plan. We need to figure out mm-hmm. what we're going to do. And so we have to have all that data. Uh, we need a, we need to do an assessment of the city first mm-hmm. before we can make a plan. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I remember earlier this month, we talked about the city budget and, yep. and how that fits into our work here at We Act and environmental justice in general. Is there a connection between the budget stuff at the city level and this report? There's a huge connection. And one of the major ones is that this report is supposed to identify the city's environmental justice areas, right? But it's also analyzing environmental and climate issues and identify which communities are being disproportionately impacted by environmental burdens and which are not seeing benefits from green investments made by the city mm-hmm. or where do we need to put more investment in? What areas are we not spending in the right money? Cause like we talked about before in the last episode that money is important. It's mm-hmm. necessary to move the work that we're doing. And so, you know, New York city being very progressive in terms of a lot of its climate and environmental laws that it's passed. How are we making sure that our outcomes from those laws are coming to fruition and also are they are they going to the right communities um, mm-hmm. first, which this is really important for that. So once we kind of have this report and we can create a plan, we can see where those gaps are in the funding and say, oh, we definitely need to invest a lot more mm-hmm. into this space, particularly here. Right. Yeah. We can say that there's still lots of issues maybe with air quality in the South Bronx. Um, we've got the asthma rates. We've got the truck traffic. We got whatever the case may be. Um, so we have a plan for that, but then what are we in, inve- how are we investing our money to make sure that we are righting those wrongs? Absolutely. So, so really all the more reason why it's important to understand what's going on with the city budget. And, you know, for anyone who didn't have a chance to listen to our, our last episode talking about the city and state budget in New York, definitely a good time to do that in anticipation of reading this report and really understanding. If you look at this report and you're like, the city's got to do some work in X, Y, and Z. Then you'll understand maybe these are some things that we can do in the budget or get passed in the budget or encourage folks to pass in the budget to to make those things happen. So uh, I think that's a pretty good overview of the report itself. I don't want to take up too much time before we jump into this interview with Peggy because I think she has a lot of really great things to say about why this report is important. You know, her experience being a part of the process and just her insights about environmental justice here in the city in in this current time that we're in. So uh, any last comments before we jump into that interview? No, I'm excited. People want to hear Peggy. Peggy, Let's go. Peggy, Peggy. <laughs> well, Thank you so much for joining us, Peggy. We're so excited to have you on the show. It's been a long time coming. Peggy is, for those who don't know, is the chair of the Environmental Justice Advisory Board, the first ever in New York City. And at the end of the month, it's supposed to be come out is uh, what's called EJNYC report. And that's being released at the end of the month. And it's the first ever. And it will take a, it will give a snapshot of the current state of environmental justice across multiple issues. So that's the environmental health aspects, the air quality that we talked about, waste, sustainability. And we are also in the midst of a budget season right now. And we know so much of the work that needs to be done and we need money to do it. And so I kind of curious of like, what are your thoughts on like the current state of environmental justice in New York City? What are some things that are, are going 
well and what are some things that we need a lot of improvement on? Well, you know, our vision um, in in developing We Act for Environmental Justice was to ensure that environmental justice was on the city and state agenda. And I think it took us maybe about a year of working with two city council people to get legislation passed that required the city to develop an environmental justice task force and a report. And so that's why this report is coming out, because we were able to to get the city council to, to pass that kind of um, legislation. So this will be the first report. I think it's a pretty decent report. It's based on the kinds of data that the city collects as a matter of course. So there might be some things that, some concerns we have that may not be uh, addressed fully, but I think the basic ones are. And the idea is that we will now, the task force will now take that report and begin to talk with and consult with community folks to figure out how we address those problems. And so the legislation requires that we develop a plan to address that report. And so as soon as that report comes out in the next few weeks, hopefully New York City will have an opportunity to get a strong picture of of environmental quality throughout the city and see what the issues are and then we're going to need to be able to do strong community engagement on addressing these problems. And then, of course, there's an interagency task force made up of city agencies who will be meeting to, uh, with the task force to propose some of these solutions that we're going to need to create a, a cleaner, healthier New York City. So this is a first for New York City. Hopefully our mayor wants to invest in stronger environmental quality in the city. And if so, um, I think we can look positively towards uh, this process over the next year or two. How do you think the mayor is doing right now? (laughs) How unfiltered do you want to (laughs) be? I think the mayor has a tough, I mean, gosh, I would never want to be mayor. I mean, that's a tough job. And then you lay the, the migrant crisis on top of it, the homeless crisis that we already had, the lack of affordable housing, and uh, continuing, you know, police harassment in certain communities. It's a lot to deal with. It's a lot to deal with. Just as we anticipate this report coming out and thinking about some things that might be in it, what would you say, you know, over the last you know, 35 years or so, what would you say that the city has made the most progress on in your mind? And what's something you feel like the city has made the least progress on that you feel like is over the last 35 years has still been failed to address? Something that you're like, how, how have we still not gotten this right? Uh, yeah, what, what would you say for those two things? Well, <laughs> uh, New York's a big city. I would say that air quality has gotten better for a lot of reasons that don't necessarily all have to do with the city. Certainly the EPA developing guidance on ultra-low sulfur fuel early on in the Clinton administration meant that there'd be cleaner air because of cleaner fuel for interstate vehicles and buses around the country. You know, the MTA investing in cleaner bus buses, the, the clean heat program, again, cleaning up boilers and incinerators. I think all of those things have helped to to have cleaner air. I think the waste issue still, the waste transfer stations have gotten under better control, but that the waste management is still a huge issue. And it's still a huge issue that we are exporting waste to, you know, incinerators in Newark. Um, which impact those communities. And I've even had people call me from Mississippi and Alabama saying you're an, you're an EJ group and you're sending your waste down here. So the waste issue is, um, 
it's not just a city issue, but it, it's, it's a national issue. And just because New York City might, it may not be as significant as it was 20 years ago or impactful, it doesn't mean that when we're exporting our waste that other communities and our colleagues and friends around the country aren't at risk. So those some of those issues cannot simply be solved by any one municipality, but I do think New York has a, certainly attempted to have cleaner air, to be more aware of the impacts of waste transfer stations on communities of color, and to to, to get some of them uh, closed and and better enforced. Because a lot of this work is about lack of enforcement. You know, that's a big EJ concern, that things are not enforced in our communities the, the way they are in others. So, you know, working with government to ensure there's enforcement, working with state government around those issues. You realize quickly that you can't have a sustainable community without the policies that affect those communities being fair and just. And so that means policies not only at the city council level, but at the state leg legislature, at the Congress. And so again, um, understanding that we have to engage significantly in environmental policy at the state level and at the congressional level. And again, through our engagement and the engagement of of many, many, many others around this country, we have a, something like $80 billion for the first time coming from the federal government to invest in communities of color and what they call underserved communities, disadvantaged communities around the country. That would never have happened without strong advocacy by the environmental justice community. You know, I co-chair the White House Environmental Justice Advisory Council to the White House Council on Environmental Quality. Again, have they taken all of our recommendations? Absolutely not. Have we made a difference? Absolutely. We just got a pause in the LNG, LNG pipeline issue. Again, strong environmental justice uh, pushback on that. So people, um, you know, our voices are being heard. They're being prioritized in some respects. The Biden administration has certainly raised the visibility of, of, of environment and climate justice in a very positive way. And so, again, it shows how leadership, mobilization, community organizing, uh, telling our story, speaking for ourselves, uh, ultimately makes a difference. Thank you. I feel like you brought us really naturally to kind of starting to, to wrap up. Uh, just to kind of help us kind of close up. I want to ask you one last question, which we, we kind of ask everyone and just kind of open it up and give you space to share anything that you feel like is important for us to address while we're on this topic of, you know, some of the current challenges in the city related to environmental justice. Is there anything that you feel like is important to mention that maybe we haven't asked you yet that, that you would like to, to share before we close out? Well, I think um, understanding that that we have common issues with our colleagues and and communities all over the globe, and that we understand issues that are just percolating in those countries, that we have experience with the organizations and governments that are, and corporations that are perhaps creating some havoc and negative impacts in other countries, and how we can begin to have stronger linkages so that we can share information and understand from a global perspective and different countries' perspectives on some of the issues we're dealing with. Um, we may say we're against uh, carbon capture and utilization, and there might be some other countries that are looking forward to it for a variety of reasons. So being able to understand each other and how these issues um, impact everyday life around the world, I think is an important direction for us and is important as we work to improve life all over the globe and to stop climate change from, from wreaking havoc in so, many, in so many nations. We're going to really have to work together stronger 
and we're going to have to have really strong, committed alliances, not only here in New York, in the country, but around the globe, uh, so that we can, as disadvantaged communities, come together to really create the sustainability and health that we need. Thank you. What a, what a beautiful place to end on. And I know that when we think about environmental justice, obviously we've touched on this. There's an inherent local component to it, thinking and working locally, but also the reminder to think globally. Think about how the issues that we're experiencing here translate and intersect with the issues folks are facing globally. So thank you, Peggy. Thank you so much for being on the podcast with us. I feel like it was such a joy. Okay, thank you. Thanks for listening. Make sure to keep an eye out for the EJNYC report. It's scheduled to be released at the end of this month. So if it's out already, make sure to check the link in the show notes. Otherwise, keep an eye out on our social media and we'll make sure to send out updates when it gets released. Also check out our next episode coming out in two weeks where we talk about the early presidential primary for New Yorkers in April and the importance of civic engagement with the help of a very active We Act member. If you like this episode, make sure to rate and review the show on whatever platform you listen on. And if you have thoughts about the show, we encourage you to reach out to us with your thoughts and suggestions at podcast at weact.org. Also check out We Act on Facebook at We Act for EJ. That's W-E-A-C-T-F-O-R-E-J. And Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at We Act for EJ. That's W-E-A-C-T number four EJ. And check out our website, weact.org, for more information about environmental justice. Until next time. Don't forget to do your taxes. Cha-ching. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do need to do my taxes. <laughs>